What's good? Welcome back to the Loophole channel. This video is going to be the second in my sound design from scratch series where I'm going to be taking you through how to create your own sounds in the style of certain artists or producers. This video is going to be focusing on Kanye and how him and Mike Dean produce songs for albums like Donda or Donda 2. Hopefully Donda 2 will have come out by the time this video gets posted, but if not, then you get a video on Ye anyway. Um, so a lot of the beats on Donna were pretty gospel influenced, so I had a lot of organs and choirs, so I'm not going to go for that style of sound. Uh, I'm going to go more for the, the big synthy sounds that Mike Dean would have created for the album. So um, I'm going to pull up the CS80 because that is the grandest synth I can think of. And also I've seen videos of Mike Dean using the CS80, so you know it's, it's pretty accurate to what he would have used i've just been filming a series on the cs80 for my course so the ideas for this synth are pretty fresh in my mind so i think i know what i'm going to do already i'm just going to create a quick midi progression to get a good idea of how i want the sound to be applied that's generally what i like to do you know create a midi or drag in some midi that suits the style that i'm going for so this is the midi that i've ended up with i'm just going to play it uh, using maybe a sine wave just so the sound isn't too annoying it sounds like this I'm going to turn this into something that's kind of, it's got an evolving sound I think I want it to have. Uh, so I'm going to turn this up, pull the filter down. We're just going to work with number one for now, oscillator one. So the concept I have for this sound is I want one of these two oscillators to start off really bright and then start to fade down. And then the other oscillator is going to fade up in terms of brightness. Uh, so that's going to involve the filter. Let's start with oscillator one starting bright and then fading down to being quite filtered. So to do that, what I'm going to do is pull up the decay to something maybe about three seconds for the filter. Pull this down a little bit, pull this down even more. So we've got this sound. So you can see it ends up really filtered. Right, I'm just going to fade it in just so it doesn't click in like it did then. So that sounds quite nice. And then let's go over to the other oscillator. I want it to fade in from filtered to bright. So what I need to first do is pull up the level here, otherwise we're not gonna hear it. Pressing keys, we can't hear anything. So let's pull this up. And then what I wanna do is start it off really, really filtered. And then we wanna pull up a really long attack. Pull this up here as well, pull this down here, and we've got this sound. Okay, so that attack was way too short, so let's pull this up to about three seconds. I think I want to reduce this down a bit. And then we end up with a really bright sound there. I'm going to pull up the release for both of these to about 100, 200 milliseconds, and then I'm going to do the same for the releases here. So then we got this sound, if I balance it out. So we've got that fading from one to the other. I think I want to add a little bit of detune. So I'm going to increase the speed of the detune here and then actually apply it to the oscillators by pulling this up here. If I pull it all the way down to the bottom, we're going to get a really, really wobbly sound that isn't going to be too pleasing on the ears. That was an understatement. That wasn't pleasing on the ears at all. So let's pull it up to maybe here. There we go. That's not really pleasing on the ears. I think I wanted to go down maybe to 0.02. Speed it up a bit. Then I think I want to add some chorus. I think I'm going to go for the tremolo option of the chorus and the CS80. They're not really labeled properly, but you have to kind of just look past that. Cool, I like that. I think maybe add a tiny, tiny bit of delay. Just gonna turn MIDI sync off. Maybe pull it to about 300 milliseconds and then pull the mix just up maybe 8% or so. Definitely less than 8%. Pull up the depth. And I think I'm just gonna play around with the filter here, make it slightly more of a bright sound overall. So in context, overall it sounds like this. I think the 
next thing I want to do is add a really powerful bass. So just like in the previous video, I'm going to use the mini for the bass. I'm going to do things slightly different this time though, because last time the bass was really, really filtered. I want the bass to be the complete opposite this time, be kind of really obnoxious and take over the sound when it comes in. First of all, we want to drop it down to a bass octave. Next thing I want to do is add another bass octave and then another bass octave. The other one, we layered it to get a really textured sound. This one, I just want it really, really gritty. I'm going to reduce the amount of detune just so we get a really, really thick layered sound. I'm going to pull up the glide. Great. I'm going to introduce some noise to make it a bit more dirty. really blow these and then what I want to do next which I know some sound designers aren't going to like is I'm going to introduce some unison to the bass that's how I've generally got those Mike Dean type sounds before uh, there was a Mike Dean bass in I think it was Lupo 2 it was either Lupo 1 or 2 so I'm going to put the polyphony at 3 and then click on unison and then we got this really really textured sound I'm going to turn down the volume a bit So that's now this really, really powerful bass sound that we didn't have before. I think maybe I'm gonna add some kind of sweeping up motion uh, with the filter. That's the bass done. I'm gonna quickly stick in some MIDI so it mixes in well with the keys. I think what I want to do is put these into the mixer first and then I'm going to remove some of the lows of the synth because by itself it has a really really nice bass tone uh, so it sounds like this so I'm going to remove some of those lows just while the bass is playing and then we got just going to turn this down So that's how the bass and keys sound. Now, it wouldn't be a Mike Dean style sample without a lead. So I'm gonna make a lead also in the mini. Uh, I know Mike Dean loves his, his Moog synths, so I'm gonna go with the closest thing we have to that, which is this mini here. Now making a lead sound is very similar to making a bass sound because they're both monophonic, but the main difference obviously is the range that they're used in. So leads are obviously used in quite a high range. Basses are used in obviously very low range. So I'm gonna pull this up to the highest range it can go, just so as soon as we start playing, we're playing it in you know, the area that we're gonna use the lead in. That obviously doesn't sound very much like a Mike Dean type lead. He uses kind of stereotypically West Coast lead-ish sounding things, but just a bit more full. One thing I wanna do is layer the sound. So I'm gonna pull in another sawtooth wave at the same octave. Bring in some glide again. Maybe bring in another sorted wave at an octave below, just quite quiet. Mike Dean always seems to use sawtooth waves. Sawtooth waves are really, really warm and rich. You don't really get that with pulse waves or triangle waves. So I guess that's why he uses them. He might use pulse waves in you know some of his work and some of his production, but the Mike Dean sound seems to be really, really warm. So I'd use sawtooth waves if you're trying to emulate that sound. It's not as filtered as this usually. It's usually quite, you know, full. Uh, so I'm going to introduce some noise to make it a bit more dirty as well. And then I'm going to add in some uh, unison, not 16 voices because that's going to be way too many, maybe just two voices. Uh, that just means we're basically doubling up the number of voices in the sound if we're using two voice polyphony. Uh, so that sounds like this. And then I think what I want to do is just add a little bit of vibrato. Just going to go to the modulation matrix, turn these all off. I generally would like to remove everything in the modulation matrix if I'm making a sound and then start from scratch. I'm going to use the LFO, which is located here. Speed it up a bit maybe. 
and then apply that to the frequency modulation of all three oscillators. So VCO one, two, and three, that's oscillator one, two, and three, frequency modulation, and I'm gonna turn it up to my liking. That's about enough, just pretty subtle, maybe slow it down a little bit. And then you can kind of freestyle on top of the other two instruments until you get something you like. I'm never gonna be able to do anything like Mike Dean, but I'll have a go at just playing it, seeing what I come up with. And then I might just dump the score log uh, into the MIDI channel. Let's have a go. That'll do. It's not quite Mike Dean, but you know. So I'm just gonna dump score log. Last two minutes. So I've just added the MIDI into the lead, and then I've also just changed up the bass for the second half of this sample just to make it a little bit more interesting. I guess it makes it a little bit more dramatic. So in its entirety, the sample sounds like this. So what I'm going to do is probably just add some effects, process it a little bit, and then I'll stick this sample along with the three presets that I made in the description. Um, but yeah, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed, if you learned something new, uh, it'd be amazing if you could leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do everything you can to support the channel, that'd be amazing. Also, don't forget to leave a comment down below on which artists you want to see featured in the next video. Um, but yeah, until next time.